Hey guys, girls, welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast. I hope you're all great and excited for another episode. Today, we are covering the future of cryptocurrency and where exactly is it going? Over the last, especially a couple of weeks, it's been up and down and it's been very, very crazy. Today, obviously, my co-host, Brandon Duff, is either going to calm you down or get you really, really excited. I think so. <laughs> Yeah, doing amazing. You're giving... Uh... Hopefully they get excited. I'm mean, sure crypto is pretty exciting, especially with the volatility uh, where you can lose $40,000 overnight uh, like I did. But uh, we I'm talked about smiling. it a few of us. Yeah, with Luna, which is was a top 10 currency and it pretty much lost its peg. But it's just a learning opportunity and money comes and money goes. And uh, I'm 100%, 1,000% positive I will make more money to replace that. And I won't be buying more Luna, but it's just a, a good, it was a good education on how to not invest in uh, algorithm. I can't say that algorithmic stable coins um, because they can lose their peg, and you can lose a lot of money. But you can also make a lot of money. So if you watched our podcasts from before about play to earn gaming, uh, I was making about two hundred fifty thousand dollars a 250,000 or a quarter of a million dollars a uh, a year from just one game so there are ups and flows to uh to crypto but if you are uh learning about the technology versus what it can do then or sorry if you're learning what the technology can do versus thinking it's just a crypto coin scam then uh you'll be in for a treat because there is mass adoption coming with gaming, with uh, being able to automate. And we talked about automation in the last uh, two episodes ago. So definitely check that out on how cryptocurrency can automate a lot of things using oracles, uh, which are taking information in the real world and uh, using it on the blockchain uh, to using, um, say, proving that you own a, um, a rental property or house and being able to transfer that license to someone else uh, without having to wait, you know, 30, 60, 90 days for that actual process to go. So I, I'm really excited about the blockchain, but w- what are your views on the blockchain? I don't think we've ever heard uh, about your, your thoughts on <laughs> crypto and all that. Yes, so to be fair, mate, we focus mainly on yours, don't we? Which is right, because you are a lot more versed and in-depth into it. I am Although I've got some crypto in there, like not massive amounts, um, it's always been a case of, and I've got people all around me, mate, Alan. I mean, all around me in like crypto day trading, crypto like buy and hold and like moving money around. Like for instance, like me, me dad's sort of journey has been like Tezos. He was into Tezos for ages. Um, and I think he's still got some, but I'm not quite sure how much. And then he went and he's gone like all in on SmartLink. Which is a, another one, um, and so he's what? Sorry, chain link. No smart link. I think it's called. Huh. Um, uh, check that out. So you yeah, learn something so new all the time. <laughs> um, and to be fair, I've got some in that. I think it's called smart link. Um, we always should take the take the take the piss because obviously the the short inversion is smart. So I remember like funny funny little story. Like my dad was banging into this like smart link and he was like going for it and going for it and putting loads of money in it. And my mum sat me down one day. She was like, I know you're into crypto, but I know you're not massively into it. She was like, you need to buy this thing called Smack. And I went, I just burst out laughing. I was like, mum, are you really telling me to buy Smack? <laughs> I was like, come on. Um, obviously, I knew she what she meant was the crypto. Just hearing my mum telling me I need to buy Smack. I was like, I just couldn't help but contain myself. <laughs> Um, well, so for yeah, people that's yeah. slang, by the way, for people that don't know, smack is um, a drug. Uh, I think it's heroin. So uh, do not buy smack of any type. 100%, Just... no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was funny because your mom is telling you to buy drugs in a sense, but using the slang word, but obviously it. that it's crypto. Yeah, thankfully it is a crypto. Um, and I, I can throw you the link if you, if you want to take a look at it. Um, I don't know too much about it. In fairness, obviously, just it was a recommendation, so I went with that one. Um, 
And yeah, so my dad does the like the whole buy and hold scenario. Um, my brother-in-law does day trading, and wow. he makes he he does some good like he has some good days and um, some very very good days in the day trading. And yeah, I'm still to that. I'm I've got me I've probably got me little toe in it, and that is probably about it at this stage. And obviously working with you all the time, and obviously like chatting to you, and obviously chatting to these guys, I'm like. And the, the question is, I don't think it's a case of, like, are you going in? It's sort of when are you going in? When have you got... Because I've got everything else going on. It's like, when have you got the time to sit there and do your own research? And, and I do need to make time. It's it's pretty a bo- bogus sort of... Like, it's a bogus sort of excuse. Um, right. And I do like that. I, I like the volatility in one way, but obviously people lose a hell of a lot of money in, in the volatility as well. Um, and the things that attract me is like the the stake in the holding, like the like you call, talk about liquidity or quite a lot, where it's basically like giving your asset up for a little bit or like like let loaning out scenario. Um, <laughs> and they're the things that sort of excite me a little bit more than the actual like the buying and the holding or the trading, because the the trading of you unless you get a bot in, like that's that's not passive. The buying and the holding is sort of it's just a big gamble. Um. So yeah, like I quite like the the whole scenario, like the the staking, which I think obviously a lot of people, a lot of newbies don't really know about. Do do they either just day trade or hold? Yeah. Um, so what's your sort of perception on what's the best way to actually make consistent, solid money in crypto? Oh man, um, how to buy? How to make consistent money with crypto? I think it really depends. There, I mean, you should obviously be diversified in your crypto portfolio because um, just like anything, uh, things could happen. Hacks could happen. There's so many hacks in the crypto space on different blockchains um, or exploits like the Luna where, I mean, obviously the founder did some stuff to you, but um where that's why you should be like diversified because I lost 40,000 on Luna and they're, they're, they're coming out with a recovery plan and all that, but I've made a lot of money through play to earn games um, from staking, from holding other coins that have gone up 10 X um, from minting and taking the, the coins that are minted and using that to buy long-term holds. So it just, I think it depends on what you're comfortable with um, and what you want um, long-term. There are a lot of great projects out there, and I think that people need to focus more kind of it's I find crypto to be like stocks 2.0 in stocks you're buying a piece of uh, a piece of paper in a sense um, that is saying that you own a portion of the company, while a cryptocurrency is pretty much a stock you're buying a, a token to have governance in the project. Some projects have governance tokens, some don't. So for instance, in the last episode, we talked about Axie Infinity and they have their AXX token and then they have their um, SLP token. And AXX token is the token that they can use to... Do you hear that? I'm I'm gonna write this down real quick. My dog's drinking water, so it's... I don't know if you can hear it. Only just, not much, until you stop talking, I couldn't hear it. Oh, man. Okay, I'll just wait till he's done. Um, do you remember what time we started? No, about five to ish. No, like, how long have we been talking? How long is the recording right now? It doesn't give you the time, does it? I think it's about six minutes. All right. So I'll just do that. Okay, I think he's done. He's done dog. Okay, so... Uh, SLP is another token that is minted, and that's kind of like their token that is doesn't have any governance. So what happens is a lot of people end up selling that instead of holding on to it because it really has no perceived value. And besides like burning it to make more NFTs, but it really it doesn't have any utility. And so people would consistently sell that and the, the actual governance token would go up so I think that crypto is like stocks 2.0 without having to worry about um, kind of 
regulations because it is kind of still the wild wild west with crypto and that's why there are so many scams and rug pulls and all that but if you invest in decent projects that you believe in long term that have an actual roadmap versus like they're actually creating something in the real world you talked about smart chain or smart link I'm looking on their website right now, but another one is uh, Chainlink, which I thought was the one you were talking about, which is actually a company that is taking oracles, which are, they grab real life data and they put it onto uh, the blockchain where people can take that data and use it as a um, whatever. So like, I can't give a really good example. I would think for me, thinking of an example is like, and you can already do this with regular programming and just technology, but say the weather, it's it's 80 degrees. And um, I'll give you another example. We have a, uh, a, um, a little thing on our um, uh, roof and it's called a rain bird. And if it rains, that rainbird sends a signal, which would be like an oracle, to our um, grass, our sprinkler system, and it would tell us not to. It would not water our grass for us. So that's like what an oracle would do: is it take real life data, transform it onto a network, which would be the blockchain. In our case, would be like our sprinkler system, and then do mathematics or whatever, or keep our sprinkler system from not providing any water or very little water because it just rained. And so that's what Chainlink does is they have an Oracle system. Um, so those are the types of systems that I would invest in. Um, Ethereum, obviously, because it's, and this is not financial advice at all, but this is just my own uh, rambling of what I uh, invested in. So like Ethereum obviously runs its own uh, blockchain and a lot of NFT projects are on the Ethereum network. And so that provides utility because it's bringing uh, project, all sorts of projects to Ethereum. And then obviously uh, BTC or Bitcoin is more of a store of value, kind of like gold. And it is a hedge against inflation. So you have to find projects that are, um, really doing something in this space and they're going to be it's kind of like if you think about it, it's like the the dot-com bubble right like if you have the a dot-com in your company name you're going to give it be given a lot of money from vcs and venture capitalists and uh 90 percent of those 99 percent of those companies are going to go underwater but uh that one percent will make you know 100x or a, a million X of your money and do really, really well. And that will take up all your losses. So there are gonna, I would say 99% of NFT projects are gonna fail, 99% of crypto projects are gonna fail. But uh, if you would actually not buy into the meme coins and all the, the meme projects and these fake NFT projects and actually uh, get projects that are legit, I'll give you an example uh, for us. We have an NFT that allows people to log in to our software super facebook tools instead of having to put in their credit card information and their email and um you know all this other like all this other personal information that and i've talked about this on podcasts where people can social engineer you steal your data and then use that to access other things you can be anonymous by buying an nft and using that nft to log in into our software or any type of software if they offer that Web3 service. And it just allows uh, kind of to be more private. You can you can browse online without having to put in your email. I mean, every newsletter, every um, everything asks for your email address. And if you can, your email address is connected to your bank's accounts, to your phone, to your, uh, you know, all these different things. So now with the Web3 applications, you don't need to worry about uh, having that email exposed. You can have just an, a web address and be able to log in into a website or anything, uh, software, um, your bank account or whatever, just based off of uh, the wallet that you own. 
So in terms of like, will that not then become a situation where everyone's trying to basically find out your your web address effectively? So like the, by the web address, you mean like the wallet? Is that right? Yeah, the wallet. Yeah. Okay, so you've well, got I mean, code. It, it's it's like, an open ledger too. So like people can see how much you have in your wallet. But it, I mean, I use a, a ledger to protect my my crypto, which is like a two factor authentication uh, device for your crypto. But um, I think I think it's kind of weird. Maybe it's just me, and maybe I'm weird. But I, I, people were very like private about money. Like I think it's kind of funny when uh, people flash how much they've made in um, like they made a thousand dollar commission, but then when you ask them how much they make or uh, you know how much do they pay in taxes, they're like. I can't tell you that it's personal information. And like, you just flashed, you made it $10,000 today. Like how, how's that, how's that any different? So I think, I mean, I'm not, me personally, I'm not really attached to money. And so I, I think that's why it, I'm, I'm not really worried about people having my, my public wallet um, because I'm pretty transparent. And so I think that, um, and they can't really do anything if they have your wallet address. It's not like they can uh, access, hack your uh, wallet address versus hacking your email. So I think it's just um, more secure in a, in a way. Okay. Uh, so we've got the increased security, obviously, with, with crypto compared to anything else. You've got more privacy. And I think that's sort of one of the big ones I'm, I'm seeing sort of like from people who are interested in crypto and people who like really get into it, like, they basically wear it on the t-shirts and they're all they're all in scenario. Um that is one thing I do see with like the crypto community is that they're very big on like, no, like, you can't have my information. Like, no, it's all mine, like leave me alone type scenario. Um and I think obviously that's having that sort of privacy, like is is quite interesting, obviously, how people are attached to that privacy. Um, and obviously using crypto for that. Now, in terms of like you've spoke about different types of coins, haven't you? Like you spoke about you've spoke about like the, the big the big two. So you've sort of talked about Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then you've also talked about like meme coins. And obviously, although this, and I will use your phrase, this is not financial advice. Why why, in your opinion, your hearsay opinion, should people avoid the likes of those types of meme coins and shit coins? Um, I think we kind why of touched would on you it? avoid them. Why do I avoid them? Because it's just gambling uh, at the end of the day. Um, the, if a project goes to zero, like the coin goes to zero, people are not incentivized to continuously work on that project. And so I find that a, a lot of people, I mean, we, we look at SafeMoon too. SafeMoon, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but SafeMoon was this largest, one of the largest projects uh, and meme coins would be said like Dogecoin and um, Shibu Inu, I think it's Inu, however you say that. And uh, they did a, they've been just slowly draining liquidity from it, stealing money from thousands, if not millions of people. And so it's just a, um, it's just, I think it's a gamble. And I think there's, there's no real utility, so there's no real reason to hold it. It's just like it's like slots in a, in a way. When versus a project that will continuously grow and provide more solutions to people, kind of like like we were talking about with uh, Chainlink and the Oracle system. So as time goes on, those uh, projects become more valuable because they give real value to its holders versus um, kind of like a Ponzi scheme where you, you need more buyers to continuously drive up the price um, and buy out the people that got in early and dump their, their holdings on new buyers in a, in a way versus when you have outside funds. So like say an Oracle system, people are going to want to rent that Oracle system like a rainbird and that's outside money where it's a subscription model in a way. I don't know how Chainlink runs their Oracle. I'm just kind of using an example here, but uses that um, that Oracle to continuously use their business. So for instance, we um, use ClickFunnels or high level in our business and we pay a monthly subscription and it gives a benefit to us. 
So I think that if people start investing in businesses, like they invest in stocks and it provides value and provides a service, then it's going to do well long-term because there's a constant flow of people wanting to use that service versus um, a lot of these meme coins are built off hype. And if the hype dies down, then no, new buyers are not going to come in, which are then going to drop the price because people are going to sell and uh, drop the value of the actual token itself. So I think that if you can find projects that um, have a real business model behind them, I'll give you another example. Gala Games, uh, we talked about gaming uh, in the previous uh, podcast, but they have one, they're a game developer, so they're constantly um, paying out money, but they also have new people coming into their game systems and they have partnerships with other gaming companies and they're able to lend out uh, their software in a sense or their network where they're able to have a platform where new game developers can join and uh, provide their game to gamers like me. And so like I have a node and so that node is part of a network that allows people to, or all the nodes are kind of like a big server in a sense. So like a cloud server and they're able to use that um, node to host their games so that they're not having to buy massive servers for uh, their company. We're giving up our resources in a sense to uh, provide for the network and we get a, a fee for that um for using that node they're at like a hundred thousand now so i wouldn't uh expect anyone to buy them anymore i have three of them so that's kind of nice but um yeah i mean the fact that if you can find a company and just for reference gala games is was founded by the co-founder of zynga which is the developer of uh, farmville on facebook back in the day when that was very popular so they do have a good team behind them also. And if you're like any gamer, then you're going to definitely be uh, into, especially blockchain games, you're going to definitely be into Gala Games. But it's it's a company that's actually developing software that people are going to use and uh, earn rewards versus a meme coin really has no value besides its hype behind it. So basically the, the meme coins, like the Shiba Inu, like when... They call it to the moon, don't you? They like, actually they flew up and then it flew down and it flew up and it flew down. And so that is based on just marketing, then, yeah? yeah. Like that price is driven up by a good marketing campaign, which yes. obviously like, marketing campaigns can flop, as we know, like they can do really well. But unless you continue to keep pumping out those marketing campaigns, that coin is always forever going to come back down. Yeah. But if, I mean, if you think about it too, like, yeah, so those those coins are going to come down, but where are they going to get that money? They're going to take it from the treasury, which is going to put selling pressure because they need to they need to essentially use crypto, cash it out, and use that money to in dollars or pounds or wherever they live to buy ads on Facebook or ads on Google or on YouTube, so that they can drive more people to buy that uh, that token. So. Once the the marketing dries up, the, the new buyers aren't going to come in, which is going to put a lot of selling pressure on the token, and it's just going to drop the price. So, I think that you need a an outside source to continuously bring more money in, so that you're able to, without draining the the treasury. And that's why I think you need a kind of real life value because you have money coming in that's. Uh, fiat or your local currency, but then that's also fueling the crypto because it's providing an actual use case within the real world, like gaming. So if, actually, if we're avoiding, obviously we're re recommending, but not selling you to avoid those coins. Um, how would you, if you were going to get into it, how would you identify, like, where would you go to identify what type of projects to look for? So if you, if you go to social media that Obviously, that's where you'll see a lot of the meme coins, obviously with that the hype and, and stuff like that. So where would you find and where would you go to get recommended crypto projects with that utility, with that real life sort of making a difference in the world? That's a great question. So you should definitely, there, I mean, there's YouTube's a great source. Um, 
just Googling different projects. There are, uh, you can go on CoinMarketCap and see the top 100 cryptos and go to each of their websites and check to see what, um, what they're doing. If they have any kind of real uh, use case, you can go and check out, uh, someone did a great little um, infograph. I can't, man, I wish I could, uh, I should look for it again and uh, we'll post it in the show notes, but it pretty much wrote down like the different layers of web 3.0 um, from oracles to blockchains to um, like different things that I didn't even think about. And it kind of gave a, a rundown of all, each of those. Uh, so I, we'll link those in the show notes. I'll find it so that you guys can see it. But I, I would say you need to find something that you're interested in. It's maybe something that you use on your daily life and see if they have something that is uh, in the blockchain. So to give an example of kind of uh, that, there's a project called Helium that is uh, a a miner that provides helium crypto, but it powers the um, the internet of things. And the internet of things is like your um, um, your oven connected to the Wi-Fi and being able to talk to other uh, devices. Your um, they had a great commercial about like if your dog gets lost, the chip, like if you chip your dog, um, it's not connected to Wi-Fi, but it can connect to the internet of things and show a GPS location of your dog. And that's the, the helium miners. And that's been grown up. Uh, it's been growing exponentially, but that's connected to the internet of things and helps with um, all of our devices that aren't connected to Wi-Fi interact with each other and talk to each other, kind of like my dis um, my talk about the dog and the chip being chipped and the GPS coordinates of that dog. So being able to find something that provides real life value and that incorporates um, kind of things you do in your daily life, I think is a great way to get into projects. So for me, that's gaming because I'm really into gaming. I think games are going to bring mass adoption to crypto. And um, I think it's a cool way to earn your own assets. But you should find things that you love. Like there's um, for streaming, instead of having all the ads and um, the centralization of YouTube and Google, there's um, Theta, which is a streaming service that doesn't have ads. It, it doesn't collect your data. It doesn't collect, it doesn't go by an algorithm and you're able to provide uh, contents on that platform as an alternative to YouTube. And you get paid in theta tokens for providing that content. So there's a lot of use cases out there. You just need to find out which ones you're actually interested in and um, what, what it can provide for you. I mean, there's cards that are coming out like high.com that give cashback rewards in crypto, instead of getting like two or 3%, you can get 5% back or 10% back. Um, it just really depends. So there's a lot of different use cases. So like that's a, a credit card company that's using blockchain technology. Um, so yeah, I would say find something that you're interested in, see if there is a, and then add maybe plus and then crypto to it. So for instance, like, um, blockchain game like gaming and then plus sign and then crypto and then you'll obviously see a slew of different gaming companies that are uh, getting into the crypto space so yeah i would say do your own research and find things that you're interested in because then you'll actually invest and be um you'll be into the actual project versus going by what some kind of influencer says because they are into that project for different reasons so in terms of bringing it out, bringing it to like the real world scenario, um, and I think this is a really good way to look at it. It's like, especially because all these cryptos, uh, ninety percent of them are supposed to be built off like a business project, aren't they? Like they're supposed to be providing something. So when you reference stocks and shares, it's probably an easier way of buying a share in a business effectively. Like I'm trying to think of like the how people can get wrap their head around crypto to make it, well, it's like this. 
Yeah, I mean, if you look at like Robinhood or any of the, the new apps that have come out with um, stock trading, they offer crypto. Mm-hmm. So like you can, you can, I can go on Robinhood or what's the other one on my phone? Um, I mean, I don't use, I don't do it often, but uh, what's it called? Weeble. Um, you can log on to these and trade or buy crypto or even stock, or sorry, you can buy stocks, but you can also now buy crypto on these things. PayPal is another example. Um, or Cash App, you can send money back and forth using Cash App, but you can also send Bitcoin back and forth to each other. So a lot of uh, PayPal is introducing uh, crypto, Visa is doing crypto, MasterCard's doing crypto, um, not as a, a way to buy and sell crypto, but I believe you, or you can buy crypto now with uh, a, a debit card through my Visa card or my bank. But yeah, a lot of different um companies now are making it much easier to get into crypto without just like as easy as it is to buy a stock because you can log on to Weeble or uh, the other one we said and buy crypto is just as easy as buying stocks. Okay, so obviously, but like, which is obviously absolutely fine, but it's it's like buying a portion of a business effectively, isn't it? Like it's by, like buying a share in a business and obviously the price goes up, price goes down, just like a stock and share would. It's just, it's in the crypto space and it's a little bit newer. And the up and down is a little bit bigger than what, what a normal stock is. But that also means if the up's good or a bigger up, you've got potential for bigger gains. It's just finding the right projects. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, like we said in the very beginning, it's just like the dot-com bubble where every project, every Dot com company was evaluated as a uh, the next big thing when in reality ninety nine percent of them failed, but there is a you know one percent that did make it through. It's just navigating through that one percent, and if you want to, um, you know, have the 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 chance of one making a lot more than. Um, what it will be in 10 years. Um, I mean, if we look at stocks now, it's been around for so long, the market doesn't go up as much and as much as it has in the past. I mean, dropping 2% in a day in crypto is like the end of the world where dropping 20% in a day in crypto is like everyday thing. So, and and it's just, just like with anything, like just do your own research um, have conviction on what you're uh, investing in and never invest more than you're willing to lose because um, you should never put yourself in financial ruin on a uh, on speculative assets. assets. I think obviously that sort of sound advice right at the end is, is probably one to listen to, isn't it? Like, no matter what you invest in crypto, stock shares, businesses, anything, like make sure like, you don't invest anything that you're not prepared to lose because obviously with with it investing comes risk and that's mm-hmm. sort of the be all and end all of it no matter what you invest in yeah and in stocks i mean there's manipulation in stocks there's manipulations in businesses i mean there's you just look at all the different things over the the years there's always going to be uh bad actors in any space and cryptos at, at this moment there's quite a bit of bad actors, but you could say that about the stock market too, where people are manipulating prices with the gas companies where they were, I forgot who, Enron, I think, where they were doing mass um, cooking of the books. So, I mean, there's bad actors all the, all over. It's just finding ones that will last the t- t- test of time in a sense, because um, it doesn't matter how high the price goes, it's just if you can recoup the price, uh, your money back um, and the investment has had a return because, um, you know, having a little bit of money continuously go for the long term and getting a small percentage is better than it going to zero where you literally can't make any of your money back because the company went bankrupt, the, the crypto got rug pulled or, or whatever. So just look for projects that will test, stand the test of time. Absolutely love it. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for tuning into the this latest episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please let us know. Please reach out to us. Obviously, let us know you're enjoying it, or if there's anything you want us to talk about, and then that would be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you on the next episode.
And remember to like and subscribe to the channel, to the, the podcast, comment down below, and I'll see you guys on the next one with Brian. So peace.